And I know that you you had a, a study that um, you shared with me looking at mice with, with breast cancer um, where you investigated the effects of, of FMD. So talk, talk to me, I guess, firstly about the, the interest in, in FMD and cancer in the first place and what your hypothesis was or is. Yes, um, my point uh, um, is that we have the nobody that, that we've ignored in the oncology field is differential property of normal and cancer cells. So I always talk about the analogy of the desert. You take a, a billion people, um, you put them in the desert, you give them um, no water, no shade, and you make them run. And you come back after two weeks and 100% of them will be dead. And um, if you put them in the same desert and you uh, give them water and you give them shade and they can let them sit, I would say after a couple of weeks, they're all alive, right? So, so yeah, a billion people, is it possible that you could change such a few things and a billion people will be either all alive or all dead? Yeah. So the same is true for, for cancer or the, let's say this, this uh, principle can be applied to cancer. Why? Because the cancer cells cannot stop running. And so, um, and so if you take away the food, um, they, uh, they're in trouble because they, now they have less food, but they're running. Uh, but this is why now the combination with standard of care comes in, right? And that's, uh, and that's why we always say, you know, you have, you have this camp of the alternative people and the, the, the ones that are obeying some of the FDA and the medical uh, rules and the ones that refuse them, Right. But in fact, it's a combination of both that seems to be very effective. Why? Because now if you are um, a cancer cell and you're just giving fasting or fasting-making diet, you can still manage because you steal from, from the system, right? You steal from other cells. So you can get the amino acids, you get the sugar, you just uh, deprive the other cells from it. Uh, this is why the, the chemotherapy, the immunotherapy, kinase inhibitors, hormone therapy, et cetera, et cetera, they're so effective together with the fasting making diet. So you generate a differential uh, environment, right? So uh, the normal cells, they know exactly what to do. They've been fa- starving for billions of years if you start from the bacterial ancestors. So they know exactly what to do. The, um, the cancer cells, just they do all the wrong moves, right? They keep on going. And now they can still keep on going as long as the immunotherapy or the chemotherapy or the radiation comes around. And then, and then it's clear that this is why in mouse model we see, you know, cancer-free survival over and over and over. Um, if you combine the, the fasting making diet with the, the whatever most effective cancer treatment you have for that cancer. Uh, now in people, well, uh, the f- now there's lots of studies uh, for the fasting making diet in, in, in clinical trials, and they look very, very good. So. For example, the 125 patient randomized trial uh, breast cancer done in University of Leiden, published a couple of years ago, showed a, um, a uh, both clinical and pathological effects. So the patients that did the fasting making diet together with chemotherapy responded much better. And I think there was a five-fold reduction from 27% to 5% of the non-responders. So the patient, the portion of patients that did not respond to the chemo. And another fantastic thing about the trial is the dose response. If you look at pathology, so the, the, the surgeon takes the cancer from the breast and then it looks at how many cancer cells are active uh, in that cancer. And then they, they, they score it. And it's called Miller pain scoring. And, um, and there's a dose response. The patient that did the, all the cycles of chemo with the fasting making diet were the one that by far had the the lowest, um, um, you know, score, meaning that they had the least can- active cancer cells within the, uh, the, the tumor mass, right? So it's very nice when you see that, um, that you know, dose response. Um, yeah, then another word, uh, study by Claudio Vernieri at uh, the Italian uh, Cancer Institute, uh, National Cancer Institute, Actually, they did two papers, one on 100 patients and one on five patients. But I, I really like the one on five patients because it showed, I think in the title, it had extraordinary survival or extraordinary effects of standard of care together with the fasting making diet in five patients. One had pancreatic cancer. So I really like that because uh, I like the, the sort of hope factor and saying, hey, 
you know, maybe um, if you run out of options, uh, you know, the FMD in this case could make a difference. It may not. We don't know yet, but 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 it could, right? So so talk to your oncologist and and um, and ask him or her to uh, consider the the fasting mimicking diet together with the standard of care. Because in some cases, in many cases, of course, we follow thousands of patients, but I I don't like to talk about that because people then say, oh yeah, he's talking about a case, he's trying to make a clinical trial out of a case. But we've seen it with many patients. But uh, the clinical trials are now are starting to. Uh, to show the, the the effects that we've seen with with lots of stories, and um, and lots of hospitals are now starting to do it. And I've heard from U.S. hospitals now they're saying now we do it with every patient. We give them the fasting making diet. So so yeah. So we'll see. But uh, looks very promising and, and also very inexpensive, right? You know, people can uh, even somebody's poor um, and and can only afford to get chem- the old chemotherapy. Um, that certainly water only fasting, if that's all they got, um, is something that uh, could make a big difference in their treatment. In these studies, where they're using it alongside traditional um, treatment for whatever cancers the the subjects have in the study, is it being done uh, in the same manner as, say, for example, what you've used in studies for people with type 2 diabetes? Is it still a five-day thing or are they doing it every day throughout their treatment or 10 days? I'm, I'm presuming it's not every day because the, the, they'd be in too much of a calorie deficit. What's the, the protocol look like? No, the, no, no, it's not every day. It's actually shorter. It's four days. It's about 600 calories for four days. Uh, the normal people is five days higher calorie. This is four days lower calorie. And um, yeah, so this was... Now it's been 15 years of, of arguing with oncologists and, and physicians and, and trying to come up with something that we're all happy with. And I think, you know, we're close to that there, meaning that, as I mentioned earlier, we don't see loss of lean body mass uh, if it's done correctly. There is a exclusion criteria for, you know, somebody comes in with too much uh, uh, frailty or cachexia or um, other um, or, you know, muscle type uh, degeneration. Um, yeah, so then some, some people are excluded, um, but uh, I'll say that the majority or maybe the great majority can be included or can be brought to a, a level where they can be included, maybe with some muscle training, et cetera, and, um, or improve nutrition, and, and then they start the fasting mini diet. So, yeah, so then, yeah, four days um, combined time with... Now, with the immunotherapy, with the chemotherapy, with the radiation, uh, so in every case, uh, there is a different design um, in the clinical trials. We spent some time with the oncologist uh, uh, to, to make sure we time everything correctly so that, um, you know, for example, in the case of immunotherapy, we want to um, make sure that we don't interfere with the efficacy of the immunotherapy, um, but at the same time, uh, uh, get the maximum effects here. I recently ran my full labs through Function Health, and I have to say the results were eye-opening. Turns out my ApoB was higher than ideal, probably thanks to a little too much coconut yogurt. I also found out I was slightly low in copper, something that I would have never suspected without testing. On the flip side, my biological age came back 13.3 years younger than my actual age, a calculation based on the work of aging researcher Dr. Morgan Levine. So all in all, I've got a few tweaks to make to optimize my lipids and nutrient status, but overall my blood work says I'm doing pretty well. That's what I love about function. You get access to over 160 biomarkers covering everything from hormones and inflammation to nutrients, toxins, cardiovascular risk, and more. And all your results are housed in one beautiful platform, all tracked over time. Once you get your results, you can make informed changes before small issues become big ones. To get started, head to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill. The first 1,000 people get a $100 credit toward their membership. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.